Aha! Fooled you! You thought you were going to see old Angry's face, didn't you? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? You don't want to see my face. You've seen my face. You know what I look like. I thought yesterday I said it might be uh, better if you were looking forwards so you could see things like this massive great school bus that comes up the tiny little roads every morning with all the kids up the top looking at through the top windows seeing everybody getting dressed but uh, anyway this is my journey to work so it's a bit more interesting isn't it than looking backwards and wondering why my voice isn't synchronized with my lips so how are you i hope you're well as you can see it's a gorgeous day in paradise tuesday the 23rd of may i know i don't know why i ever tell you that because it's always on the uh, titles it's going to be a warm one today it's going to be nice so remember what i said around about my birthday everything really starts to hot up so uh, what can we talk about today well i mean there's a few bits and pieces going on in the dental world nothing earth shattering but probably useful intel if you're in the business of running a surgery and trying to make a profit but um, the biggest news on the uh, telly this morning is the um, the attack in uh, Manchester last night at the Avril Lavigne concert where apparently some guy blew himself up and took a load of kids with him and you know the media's all over it really you know which I mean you can't blame them but uh, uh, terrorism's a tricky subject isn't it you know I mean what, what do you you try and say anything that's not out, out of you know that's out of the ordinary on terrorism and people are like well that's a that's a bit of a weird thing to say you know so <clears throat> I'm you can probably gather that I'm prefacing what I'm gonna say I'm gonna put that disclaimer on it in that um, you know I'm not in any way condoning anything like what happened last night but I think uh, in order to understand the war on terror as it's called you have to you have to sort of delve a bit deeper than the sort of soup the Piers Morgan superficiality um, in the same way as if you want to understand the war on drugs and win the war on drugs you know we, we are we are certainly not winning the war on drugs don't think that preventing a few drugs entering the country is anywhere close to winning the war on drugs I mean the the objective really on drugs is to uh, reduce people's dependence on them but then you know so <laughs> so then you start for first of all you start off by abusing the definition of a drug don't you what you do is you discount all the popular drugs like caffeine and then uh, you also uh, uninclude all the other popular drugs all the alcohols then you uh, make sure you don't include any of the medical drugs, prescription drugs, even though they're, you know, almost certainly a lot of them are overprescribed and abused. And then, uh, lastly, what you do is you then come up with a some cockamamie classification system that is based on political expediency and not at all on the uh, the damage, you know, the harm to society done by the various drugs. So you end up with uh, drugs like cannabis being far classified at a high, far higher rate than is warranted by their sort of chemical properties. Now I'm saying this is someone who doesn't like taking tablets and it was never to my, I mean I may have had a puff on a cannabis cigarette once but, um, you know, but I'm not, I'm not advocating widespread use of drugs, I'm, I'm against, I'm advocating the abolition of widespread stupidity, <laughs> it's always been my approach and the wasteful use of public funds on fighting a war that can't be won because it's not being fought appropriately and I think the same thing is true this morning of terror people are saying you know what is the government going to do we're fed up with lighting candles we're fed up with having vigils signing petitions we want this problem fixed you know we want it sorted we want it sorted 
Okay. And we're off again. Technical problems, you see. This is, whatever you do, you have to iron out the technical glitches, don't you? In this case, what I did was I switched cameras and the back facing camera that records me is the sort of the selfie one is, is ridiculously low resolution normally five megapixels and the oh god and the one on the front of the camera is uh, is a different resolution isn't it it's much higher resolution it's 12 megapixels so what happened was very quickly it sort of uh, ran out of you know the maximum amount that it could record in a single clip so what I've done is I've down Graded the picture on the front to 4.1 megapixels so hopefully we should be able to do the full 10 minutes or whatever it is we've got left any anyway, what was I talking about okay we we're talking about the war on drugs weren't we and we're talking about uh, having a meeting uh, this morning because of the terrorism attack in committee office briefing room a which they like to call Cobra because it sounds like there's sort of some prospect of striking back doesn't it it's like we've been struck we're going to strike back. Cobra, call in Cobra. <laughs> it's nothing more than a meeting room. Uh, probably a bug proof and nuclear, nuclear resistant meeting room. But anyway, that's not the point. It's a bit like nice, you know. They like to call nice nice because they're hoping that they're going to be nice. Whereas in fact they're not. But <laughs> nice was the committee that was responsible for... Uh, removing expensive drugs from people who are likely to die and therefore won't, won't appreciate them. <laughs> so, Cobra and Nice are uh, initialisms that, uh, you know, well anyway, you know you know what I mean. So, so with, with terrorism, okay, let's just go back to basics. So, what is the point of being a terrorist? Well, the the idea behind terrorism is that it's um, it's a weapon of the powerless and by powerless I mean it's a weapon of uh, I mean these people are no less powerful than you or I I mean they have a they have a vote in the ballot box usually they just choose not to uh, go that route oh, sorry death junction so um, yeah, so, but basically what they want is they want to effect political change and um, they don't have any reasonable prospect of doing it through the democratic system for one reason or another. It may be that they're uh, uh, disenfranchised or it may be like as, as we were uh, excluded, you know, by the powers that be, the, the sort of entrenched, uh, entrenched uh, system. And so... The, the theory goes something like this. <clears throat> what you do is you can't change the government because you can't, politically you don't have enough supporters or uh, so, and you don't have an army so you can't take on you know the, the government by force. So what you do is you force the population to change the government for you. And the way you do that is you carry out random attacks of terror, which obviously greatly alarm and distress the public. And there's no um, pattern to these attacks. Uh, they are literally random. Um, you know, given that you know they're really designed to maximise the alarm and distress that they cause, and the randomness and unpredictability is part of that. So, why would you? You know, what's going around blowing people up going to do? Well, what it does is it makes the population put pressure on the government. To solve it, exactly what we're seeing this morning. People, people like idiot like forwards like Piers Morgan coming on and saying, um, you know, we're fed up with signing petitions. Why we want the government to do something about it? Now the government, you know, would if they were being honest have to admit that there's nothing much they can do about completely random attacks on the population. If you go back to the Second World War and uh, when the Germans were, you know, dropping V1s and V2s on us, that was like a V2 was a rocket attack and it moved faster than the speed of sound. So basically the noise of the rocket arrived after the rocket had already landed. All right.
right, I've succumbed and turned the camera around because it's run out again. There's some problem with uh, recording on the front of the video. I don't know what it is. I think it might be a licensing issue. It may be that, it, you know, without, if it records more than five minutes worth of video, they have to license it as a video camera. I, I think there's some funny thing like that. So, um, yeah, so V2s were landing on London and um, they were the closest really to a random bomb that you could get in the Second World War. And the way that the government dealt with that possibility of large civilian casualties was to close down all the venues where large civilian congregations were likely to occur. So they closed down all the theatres and the music halls and the cinemas, um, you know, to in, in order to avoid one of these venues getting hit by a by a random bomb and uh, causing large fatalities. Now, you know, when you're at war for a short period of time, that's sort of doable, isn't it? But uh, it's not really doable in peacetime and on a long-term basis. You can't just ban outlaw uh, concerts and stuff. So there will always be large congregations of people. And the technology at the moment is not sufficient to be able to screen people in those sort of numbers. I mean, it is, but... Uh, I mean, they've just introduced, or they're about to introduce a ban on laptops flying across the Atlantic. And to be honest with you, I am fed up enough with the Americans and their and their travel inconvenience that they've put me to to be in two minds about whether to fly there anyway let alone if they start saying you know I have to fly with one sock on and one sock off and aluminium foil on my head so you know your your uh, anything that you take there is liable to be seized anything electronic you take there is liable to be sucked of any content it's got and you know it's it's illegal now to refuse to reveal your passwords if you're crossing a border people will just stop crossing borders the information will carry on crossing borders <laughs> in an encrypted form and the terrorists and the criminals will carry on crossing borders because they have the means to do it it's just you and i so so my point is it's you and i that gets terrorized okay we are the one that gets terrorized not that the government is uh, terrorised as well because they start to see their poll rating suffer because the population sees them as unable to protect the, uh, the public against this enemy that can't be seen, can't be touched, can't be grabbed and you know as soon as they knock one down another one rises in its place. Which I think is the... Um, you know, I mean, that's the, about the only thing I've ever taken from terrorism is their leadership style. Because they have a bit like, again, the resistance in the war. At any time, any one of them could have been arrested by the Germans and locked up or killed, tortured, whatever it was. And so what happened was they took turns to be the leader. So in other words, they didn't really have a... They had a sort of a, a coordinator, if you like, perhaps a contact... Uh, facilitator I suppose is the modern word for it but in fact they took turns to lead missions and um, on the mission the, you know person X was the leader then everybody did everything person X said and then next mission person Y would be the leader uh, uh, random and everyone would do what person Y said now, and I'm not saying everybody's a natural leader or that person X and person Y were necessarily uh, any good but the point is that uh, if a large a section of the group was seized and rendered um, and put out of action then the group would seamlessly move to the next leader you know someone else who had previous leadership experience and um, and so the, so it's very difficult to shut down the cell because the cell morphed all the time and that's a good principle, I think, in, in leadership, in teleocratic management, is to just ask yourself, how does your surgery function when you're not there? Are there, you know, people who can take the lead? Um, and your family, in a way, because, you know, we're, we're not, none of us are going to be around forever, so you have to think about the dynamics of uh, succession planning in terms of uh, your personal life. Who's going to be 
Are they going to be okay? You know, are they going to function or do they rely on you so much that you're all going to end up in the poorhouse when you, when you die? So many people die without wills, you know, because they don't think they're going to die. I mean, they know they're going to die. They just don't think on the day that they die, they didn't think it was going to be that day. So, <laughs> it's never a good day to die, as we said. So, anyway, that's my only take on the terrorism. I think the government, the problem with the government is they have to, if they're honest, say to the population, I'm sorry, we cannot protect you against terrorists. We cannot. There's just, there's too few of them. Uh, they are, and they have too much scope in terms of what they can do, you know. I mean, they can, you know, I mean, anyone, anyone can paralyse London. If you're a Londoner, you know, you can see what paralyses London. You know, someone, just a, a bridge strike or a, a few, <clears throat> someone drops a few bits of metal screws on an escalator or something. All these things that you see happening day to day that paralysed services, if coordinated, would paralyse, you know, London if, if it was done on, a, on an intentional basis. All these things I'm talking about have happened accidentally. And they're very difficult to guard against. It's not that I'm suggesting that you do any of those things, you idiot. But um, anyway, but just sort of try and step back from it a bit, you know, look, look at the problem outside the box. The the terrorists want uh, want the population to lose confidence in the government and clamour for a new government which the terrorists hope will be more sympathetic to their cause and <clears throat> possibly even consisting of them. So how do you help terrorists? Okay, well, <coughs> for a start, you act like Piers Morgan this morning and start saying the government must do something instead of admitting that the government can do very little. Um, but, you know, I, I've seen other um, aspects of people's reaction to terrorist attacks which assist the terrorists. I mean, they first of all, they want to um, increase the author authoritarian nature of the government. They want the government to crack down <clears throat> and turn the screws on the population because they want, remember, as I say, they want to make the government unpopular. So every time the government says, well, we're bringing in new regulations or we're going to start uh, mass surveillance or we're going to uh, ban encryption or we're going to um, <clears throat> put up CCTV in your toilet or uh, whatever they do, that's, that's exactly what the government want. And when people say to you, oh, well, you know, it's, we, you know, Surely you want these onerous, uh, ridiculously onerous um, uh, new restrictions because they're making you safer. They're actually not making you safer. They're making you, they're putting you more at risk because they're rewarding the terrorists. They're, they're telling the terrorists, keep on, you know, stick on. What your plan is working. The government is getting more repressive. It's getting more right wing, more fascist. And uh, therefore, the time that the, the population will rise up against it and overthrow it is coming closer. So, if you know the next time the government, when you go through the airport and they ask you to take your shoes off, just because some random number generator said that you're the one that should take the shoes off, just remember who's carrying out the fascist, the terrorist, uh, the terrorist uh, will here. And at the dental surgery. Um, they, they have a, a television on a stalk, you know, like you know, like you used to get in a school where they, it would be, there'd be massive excitement in the class because they would wheel in a TV on a stalk. And so they've got one of these TVs on a stalk and um, they had it out about two months ago that something was going on in real time. I can't remember what it was. God. Anyway, the point was that it enabled them to sit in reception and watch the news, you know, Sky News, real time Sky News, helicopters, blah, 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 lots of sirens, lots of flashing blue lights, lots of alarm and distress. And they were, I said to them, <laughs> this is why Old Angry is not popular. I said, like, you know, you're doing the terrorist job here. I said, your people are coming to work, they're quite happy, they're going to come to work as normal, and what they're going to do is they're going to see 
they're going to see you wholly exceptionally having moved a television into the public foyer to broadcast all the alarm and distress that's going on and give the impression that it's a life or death issue whether or not it's monitored in real time like 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 a countdown to a nuclear attack and that is exactly what the terrorists want that's exactly what they want they, they don't want you just to ignore them you know it would be better off if if the whole thing was downplayed and then they would realize that however many people they blew up um, they weren't going to get anywhere um, but you know it's sad it's sad for the people they blew up it's like winning uh, life's lottery in reverse, isn't it? It's a shame that life's like that. Anyway, not much dental content today, but, uh, you know, important stuff is important. It's time for work, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.